So when you have a negative emotion, when you start hating people, when you become angry, when you are depressed, when you worry, it shrinks your DNA. And this leads to things like cancer. This leads to other kind of sicknesses and abnormalities that your body will naturally make. When bad luck hits, it like it continues. It doesn't stop like you're in a hole and you're sinking and you can't come out. Good morning and welcome. Welcome especially to our Trinity family members, to our morning service. If you're joining us for the very first time, please take the time to subscribe to our channel, YouTube, it's free. Press the notifications bell so that every Sunday you can receive a word from the Lord from this pulpit. I want to thank our patrons, those who are our members that contribute to this ministry. Never forget that a prayer always goes out on your behalf, interceding for you to the Lord himself. I know that God takes care of those who are faithful. Beloved, we're in for a treat this morning. There's so much I'm going to give you in a broad uh, spectrum of things. So it might be advisable for you to go back, make some notes, take uh, the time to absorb everything so that when I finish, uh, when you've completed listening probably for the second or third time, you would have allowed it to abs be absorbed into your system. It's important for you to be aware of uh, the times. Things are happening very fast in front of us. And uh, it's important for us to rectify those things about our spirit which we feel need to be changed. Um, let me start, <clears throat> well first I have to tell you that there are many secret and covert operations that are happening in the world. Uh, some I've advised you about a couple of years back but it's now coming into the forefront, into the light and I want to thank all our members for being astute for finding things. Some of them are forwarding them to me so that we can be uh, abreast of everything and the light can shine on everything. Now, if you are in South Africa, there's a few things I'd like to just share with you that's happening and I'm sure no matter where you are in the world, these things are happening behind closed doors and soon it will be revealed. Now, Business Tech has an article that is uh, telling us on the 8th of June it's been released that there are six new laws coming to South Africa and what you need to know. The main paragraph I want to highlight New regulations open for comment range from changing the way food products on store shelves are labeled to significant reforms in various job sectors that may impact employability. Now, there is an advert that I want to play for you before I continue. Watch this. We are surrounded by products that we don't know can hurt us. Our parents rely on warning labels to know what's bad for us. Without warnings, we could eat things that make us very sick. Food that is high in sugar, salt and fat is also bad for our health. We need protection. Support the regulation for warning labels on unhealthy packaged food. Act now. We only have until 21 July 2023. Now, this establishment um what's in our food is taking the fight to parliament. They are about to pass a bill that will not require companies to list the ingredients at the back of the products. Logic will dictate that what is the reason for this change? And as I've mentioned to you in the last two years, two and a half years going, that there are products that are going to be coming that are not going to be natural. That word starting with G is uh, going to be all over our shelves and you are not going to know. There is um, ample evidence 
that there is a pushback for this kind of products. And for this reason, uh, they don't want to tell anybody. And you know, this is literally poison that's going to go into our bodies. And this is all part of the plan. So, you know, it, it, we, we're living in a very dangerous time and things are unfolding. Now, I want you to look around when you, you know, people are just going on with their daily lives. Uh, Christians are going to church and coming back. And I want to ask you, you know, ponder for yourself how many of these people actually know what is going on in the world and the time that we are living in. You know, when you look at the book of Revelation, Jesus specifically tells us that these people are going to be in oblivion. It's, going to, it's like the sheet covers their eyes. They're not going to see a thing. It is up to us to shine the light on these things. And, you know, sometimes you'll get people who will be akin to what you're saying and some will reject it. But the bottom line is, is that when we are aware, our prayer life becomes more intense. It should become more intense. We should have a closer relationship and walk with the Lord. You're going to start to see uh, after this thing, that poison that they gave us in the last couple of years, you'll find that people are going to start to develop cancers, if not uh, all different kinds of sicknesses. And uh, the end goal is that a large amount of people on this planet should not be here, especially by the year 2030. I, I want you to have a look at uh, this fake intelligence that is um, taking the world by storm. In fact, the summit has just completed and all these um, robots appeared before the, the world, NATO organizations and United Nations and uh, they want to assure the world that this is a safe venture. And in fact, if you didn't realize by now, uh, China is the, the laboratory for experimenting on the new world order. One of the, th the things that are taking the forefront at this time is the intelligence that is artificial. And it's in the schools. I want you to watch this little clip. A system like China has. It's very dangerous. The video shows how China is using AI in their schools. Know exactly when someone isn't paying attention. These headbands measure each student's level of concentration. Oh my the information God. is then directly sent to the teacher's computer and to parents. Classrooms have robots that analyze students' health and engagement levels. Students wear uniforms with chips that track their locations. There are even surveillance cameras that monitor how often students check their phones or yawn during classes. But schools say it wasn't hard for them getting parental consent to enroll kids into what is one of the world's largest experiments in education, boost students' grades, while also feeding powerful algorithms. Whoa. Yeah. Whoa. They're going to kill us. And then we're going, you know, we played a video last week that showed you that these people are saying that they're coming for our children. They've been coming for the children for a very long time. And if you look at the general population, the expansion of evil amongst the young people, the, the waywardness, the immorality is at its height. And one of the weapons that was used against them from the time they were growing up is these, these channels that are on our television. Now Disney is coming out to say uh, what their plan was and w where it is going. Watch this. Thank you, I'm Alan Bergman. I'm the co-chair of the entertainment division at Disney. And we have a special announcement to make today. As you know, Disney is a place of magic. It's where frogs turn into princes, where orphans like Cinderella can transform into beautiful princess. And Unlike us jaded adults, the children believe in magic. And we spent a hundred years cultivating a brand that has been trusted and loved by families for generations. And with that trust, we've covertly been inserting queerness into our films and television shows. First as LGBTQ background characters and later in leading roles and plot points. 
And few parents know that two years ago now for Pride Month on Disney Plus, our streaming service, we streamed the Disney Plus Drag Queen Extravaganza to help introduce queer ideologies and sexualities to the children and encourage them to experiment on their own. And we're proud of our perfect DEI score, our diversity, equity, and inclusion score, but we always strive to go above and beyond what is expected. And so we're proud to announce that this summer we're gonna be opening Disney-themed pediatric transgender clinics for the children across the country. As you know, there's still a tremendous stigma against parents deciding to change the gender of their children, especially for those raising their children as gender non-binary and using they, them pronouns. And so we're confident that with our Disney brand puberty blockers and our character-themed clinics that we can help reduce this stigma and we can normalize these ideas and we can make them mainstream. Other brands like Bud Light, Gillette and Pantene have helped pave this path and we're proud to take the lead and bring us into the new world order. We want to thank Governor Gavin Newsom, President Joe Biden, Assistant Health Secretary uh, Rachel Levine, an incredible woman. I notice I didn't say transgender woman. She's a real woman and it's about time that we stop making these divisive distinctions when talking about her and others. So every patient will receive a free season pass to any Disney theme park. And just for coming in for a consultation, you'll get a free six month subscription to our Disney Plus. Now, if you listened carefully, they are covertly uh, inserting queerness. Uh, and now they're going to no more covertly put it in before the, the this gentleman said, calling him gentleman, he, um, they inserted it as background characters in movies, you know, these cartoon characters. Now they want to make these queer people the main characters. And, and, and it's no longer being hidden, it's coming out. But uh, we are, you know, the, the more you are aware of these things, the less you get caught out, including, especially, the children that live in your home, those that come, those that are special to you. You know, we're talking about hidden things coming out. I'm just displaying to you a, a revelation of all these things that are going on in the world in different spheres. Now, I want you to see the deviousness, the in-your-face kind of mocking about who is doing the perpetrating of this crime against God's children in the world. And it starts with this very little known island in the middle of the Indian Ocean, not far from Malaysia, not far from India. This island is called the Diego Garcia Island. Now, in order for us to get a bit better picture of this island, I want you, you know, there's a vast history. I can't get into everything, but this little video clip should give you an idea. Watch. Out here in the Indian Ocean, there's a lot of emptiness. But if you scan long enough, you'll see something. Right here, equidistant between Africa and Australia, you'll see a cluster of incredibly remote bits of land, hardly peeking out of the ocean. This is the Chagos Archipelago, a chain of around 60 remote atolls and islands, a thousand or so kilometers from any landmass. There used to be people here, local islanders who lived here for many generations. But those islanders are gone now. And today, the main island, called Diego Garcia, looks like this. It's a United States military base. And instead of a local community of coconut farmers, this island is now a little slice of America, transplanted into one of the most remote places on Earth. But this weaponized island doesn't even belong to the United States. It's technically British territory that was secretly rented to the US in a covert deal 50 years ago. So what's going on here? What's the deal with this American base on a technically British island? And whatever happened to the thousands of islanders that used to live on this island? 
The U.S. and the U.K. didn't sign any treaties or formally transfer any money during this process. All of that would require congressional approval and public scrutiny and all of these things that would probably make it not possible. So instead, they kept the deal secret, like literally secret. Like in the letters that they wrote back and forth, they said, quote, there is a secret agreement and that the U.S. would, quote, effectively but indirectly pay the British for these islands meaning there was no money changing hands, but they still paid them by wiping out the debt, and that they would be taking, quote, special measures to maintain the secrecy of this arrangement. But there was still one big problem here, which is that there were over a thousand locals still on this main island of Diego Garcia. But in the eyes of the US and the UK, this wasn't a problem. In a government memo, the British assured the Americans that there will be no indigenous population except the seagulls. And indeed, they made good on their promise. The locals were herded onto cargo ships and shipped off to the islands of Mauritius and the Seychelles. And they were left there in a world that many of them had never seen before to fend for themselves. Many had never worked outside of their island. They had no skills or no way of getting work. Back on the island, their pets were rounded up and gassed. Diego Garcia became more and more militarized with time. Soon it had a deep sea port where nuclear submarines could dock, and it soon took on the nickname, the Footprint of Freedom. And yet with time, it became more and more secretive. No journalists are allowed to visit Diego Garcia. Few civilians have ever arrived here. And among those civilians, by the way, are NFL cheerleaders who came to boost morale of the troops. The island was also used as a CIA black site, used to interrogate suspects after 9-11. Both the US and the British governments denied this and then finally admitted it. We did some things that were wrong. We tortured some folks. So even up until now, this hub military base is a military base of the CIA. And the commissioner, that is, has been appointed there. It's a, it's a British territory that has been illegally uh, an agreement signed so that the Americas can rent that space to conduct all their operations into the Middle East, into Afghanistan, into Iraq, into the Far East. This is the hub of operations. And all the planning of evil to subju subjugate human beings are being orchestrated in that island. There is no reporters that are allowed on that island. Before I take you any further about that island, I want you to pay attention to that name. Why the Spanish name, Mexican name, Diego Garcia? Let's look closer. You know, nobody revealed this to me. This is what the Lord put in my spirit to identify what's happening. Now, the, the word Garcia, for example, the first three letters, G-A-R, it stands for, it's, it's short for a garrison, which is a military uh, post and CIA intelligence agency. So, so GA stands for garrison and CIA, and CIA stands for CIA, which means Garcia. So it is a CIA military outpost. And the word Diego is even more interesting. Diego means teacher from ancient Greek. And more interesting and importantly, Saint James, or may God protect. And here is the most interesting part. It means holder of the heel and supplanter from James or Jacob, more especially Jacob. Now, supplanter. Supplanter means to usurp the place of, especially through intrigue or underhanded tactics. In the Bible, Jacob supplants his older brother, Esau. We see that in the book of Genesis. Afterward, his brother came out and his hand took hold of Esau's heel. So his name was called Jacob. Isaac 
was 60 years old when she bore them, Isaac's wife. And now, you know, if you know the story of the Bible, these twins, Jacob and Esau, Jacob later became known as Israel, the true Jewish nation. But uh, his brother Esau was actually the firstborn. And he was coming out of the womb when his brother Jacob was trying to hold his heel and supplant him, deviously pull him back so Jacob can come out first. But Esau came out first. So Esau, in, 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 in Jewish culture, the firstborn inherits everything, the power, the money from his dad. But as you know, the mother, uh, the father was going blind, Isaac was going blind, and the mother uh, deceitfully uh, made uh, Jacob appear as if he was Esau. And the mother did that for obvious reasons, because she, as, long as, as well as all the other community people, they knew that Esau was a wild man. He, on the, in that period, he committed rape and murder. And so he was no leader that the mother was proud of. So she wanted her, her more, uh, the son that she could be more proud of to take the father's inheritance. So because of that, she, she deceitfully uh, arranged for the father, Isaac, to give he, the, the rightful blessing that was due to Esau to Jacob. So Esau felt uh, betrayed. He felt God let him down. And I told you about this because Satan had the same feeling toward God when God created man and made man his favorite. He is to take over his inheritance to be a joint heir with him. Satan became jealous. He became envious of man. And uh, he was, he was, uh, bet he felt betrayed because he was the first angel that God had ever made. And up to that point, he was God's favorite. And so he felt now something is coming behind him to take over from him the most important position. And the same feeling that Esau had, Satan shared. And so Satan got a hold of Esau's bitterness. And from then on, there was satanic movements through Esau's generation. And I shared this with you in so much detail in the past. And so this animosity now is shared by all the Ashkenazi Jews, the children of Esau. These people that are per perpetrating the cabal, the elite, the ones that are in control of the world's finances, the ones in the BIS bank, the ones in BlackRock, they are all part of the Ashkenazi Jew clan. And, and, and these are the ones that are in charge of the CIA operations. So when they established this island, you know, with, uh, with irony, they, they wanted to use the name Diego, supplanter, to show that they have overtaken Jacob's children, in other words, God's children, and they are now supplanting. So they are winning their rightful inheritance to the earth, the planet, and everything on it belongs to them. So with that right, they want to trample on the rest of God's creation. And this is the animosity that breathes inside of a human being. While we're on that topic, I want you to bear in mind the repercussions of having such hatred stir up in your heart, yours and mine. Because these things are a wet soil for Satan to plant a seed that will remove you far from God. And so even if you have some bitterness, some anger, some unforgiveness, looking at the history of these, this tribe, 
I ask you to put that behind you and let God's love filter through. You'll see by the end of this sermon exactly what uh, the repercussions are for carrying such hatred. You know, just to put everything into perspective, uh, the Wikipedia about, tells us about Diego Garcia in the politics section. Diego Garcia is the only inhabited island in the British Ocean Territory, an overseas territory of the United Kingdom, usually abbreviated Biot. The government of the Biot consists of a commissioner appointed by, underline that, King Charles III. The commissioner is based in London. You know, these people go around with human rights. They want to promote human rights, the United Kingdom and the palace and all these people. Do you know the inhabitants of Diego Garcia, if you look deeper into the history there and all the other videos that go with it, they removed these people forcefully. They poisoned their animals and they're living in poverty right at this time for 50 years in the islands of Seychelles and Mauritius. And it's just degrading. I want to read to you the book of Luke chapter 10. You know, we've been reading this as Christians for very long, but I doubt you really got the true import of what this statement by Jesus means. If you understand it fully, a light will come on and you'll start to see things a little clearer. Get ready for the revelation. Verse 16 tells us, No one, when he has lit a lamp, covers it with a vessel or puts it under a bed, but sets it on a lampstand that those who enter may see the light. Here's the sentence, take note, for nothing is secret that will not be revealed. No anything hidden that will not be made known and come to light. Therefore take heed how you hear. For whoever has, to him more will be given. And who does not, whoever does not have, even what he seems to have will be taken from him. Let me expand on this in a way that you probably didn't see. I want you to imagine we're living in a huge hall, all of us. And the light, the Lord has given me a light. Now, if, if there's, it's in total darkness, this big hall. Or you can say, I'm standing on the top of a hill. And, and you are down amongst, all of you are down, picture this in your mind. All of you are down at the bottom of that hill. And it's dark. You can't really see the plotting against you. You can't see what's going on in the dark. And God gives me this light from this hill. And when I shine this light, speak my words. Everything lights up around you. So you can see the plots, the secrets. Nothing will be hidden because the light is shining on all these things that are going on. So nobody can catch you by surprise. Now when God gave me this light to shine on the things, on the world around you, he didn't give it to me so that I can cover it up and keep it to myself. He gave me this light so that I can shine it so that the people can see where they're going. And if you don't have darkness around you, then you can see those things that are hidden. Nothing that is hidden will not be revealed when the light shines on it. And, and th this is my assignment in the end of days to shine that light so that the people do not stumble in the darkness 
Now God is saying here, be careful what you hear. So people can speak in the dark, in the dark. when people are in dark, they can speak and people can be bluffed. But when the light is on, what you heard has shined, has shone it on everything. And then he says, if I don't shine the light, whatever light he gave me, it seems that I have, I will lose it. So it is, it is mandated. Now, since you carry that light, since the light has been given to you to carry, you too cannot cover it up. It's your job to shine. That this, is, this is mandated to you by God. Now you're carrying the light. Now, you see when you walk around now, you're not walking around like the other Christian people. They're going, singing, clapping, dancing, falling down, getting laid in, reading the Bible, coming, going, coming, going. You are of a different caliber. You are like a new creature. You can see things now. Where they, if you try to tell those people that are in the dark, they're, what are you talking about? What are you talking about? Because only you can see it. So, your job now, I'm giving you this mandate that God has given me. Because whatever you have will be taken away from you. These are his words. And this is the reason I ask you. Please, take time to share these things. This it's, it's more important than you making money at this time. It's more important than you going to work and earning a salary at this time. This is regarding the spirit of a man. This is regarding saving the spirits of people all around you. Your bosses, people you work with. Listen, you're going to be rejected many times. But if some, even one catches that light... That is salvation to that person through your work, through your light. Even when I preach, you'll find people follow for a little while, then they want to unsubscribe. Then they want to unfollow. Listen, I cannot be dismayed by anyone that refuses to see the light. I have to keep shining no matter what, that's my job. And I want you to take that mantle of light as well and do your best to make that happen. Last week, I want to just complete that thought so I can bring you new revelation. I promised you something very deep and I'm going to bring that to you. But let's finish what we shared last week, something maybe even deeper than what we're going to share this week. We spoke about the two seeds, the good seed, and the evil seed that Satan sowed inside of Adam who already had a good seed in him. Now the good seed is connected to the spirit world. The good seed is not connected to the physical material world. The evil seed is connected to the material world. And this is so important Evil is connected to the material world. Evil is down. Good is up. So nothing physical, nothing material can satisfy or help grow the good seed. So no money is going to help the good in you prosper. No car no clothes, no jewelry is going to help the good seed in you to grow. But those things will help the bad seed in you to prosper. Not that it's bad to have those things. Don't get me wrong. It's bad to treat them with priority. When the spirit of God is the priority. As long as the good takes priority. And the, the, the material means nothing to you. That's when the good seed overtakes the, the, the bad seed. 
Now, if you want to prosper the evil seed, it takes mammon. And mammon is the only thing that can satisfy the evil seed. And God is the only thing that can satisfy the good seed. And this is why Jesus said, you cannot serve both God and mammon. Because some people do the opposite. If they get money, they can give God up, it doesn't matter. But there's others who can lose everything. But they have God, it means everything. You'll know of scriptures that speak to this. Matthew 6, 24. No one can serve two masters. These are the Lord's words himself. For either he will hate the one and love the other, or else he will be loyal to one and despise the other. You cannot serve God and mammon. Mammon represents the material world, and God represents the spirit world. And this is the advice Jesus gave to the young man that was rich that came to him and says, I've done all these things. And then the Lord says, let me test him. He got depressed because he lost the mammon. Or he was, God told him he needs to lose the mammon to get closer to God. These two good and evil seeds, material and spiritual, they are constantly in conflict with each other. It's the lust of the flesh against the goodness, the good seed. Let's read Galatians, Paul tells us clearer. For the flesh lusts against the spirit and the spirit against the flesh and these are contrary to one another so that you do not do the things that you wish. Now even the Lord himself, when he walked as a man into the desert and carried away by the Spirit of God, what did the Spirit of God do first to Jesus? He took him into the desert to be tempted by material things so that the bad seed, because his mother was, was Mary, she was a human, she was a descendant from the seed of Adam. So she carried bad seed in her, whether she liked it or not. Sin was in her, whether she liked it or not. But when Jesus was born, even though the Holy Spirit was dead to Jesus, the mother was a human and bad seed was inside that body. And the first thing when the Holy Spirit descended upon the Lord, took him into the desert to be tempted. Why? To kill the desire of material things. So Satan ro rose up and he just did what the Spirit of God wanted to do. What did him to do? He wanted him to tempt Jesus. And so at that time when the temptation came, even to eat food, material, to boast, jumping and letting the angels catch him, material, it's, it's a, pride is a material thing. It's a thing that people must look at you and, and admire you. He told Jesus he'll give him the kingdoms of the world. And Jesus said, everything that my father speaks, I rather listen to that because my goodness must come out. And at that mountain, he crucified his evil seed. And this is the walk that we constantly must have. A constant desire to resist. And so if you happen to get depressed because someone stole your money. If you happen to a spirit to get so demoralized. because, In fact if you bury hatred in your heart because your brother stole that house. That hatred is born out of the loss of mammon. So no matter what money problems you have, you cannot allow it to depress your soul. Some people get so depressed of money loss, of not having material things, that they even take their lives. Now if you feed that desire of the evil seed in that way, even if you don't have and you desire it, you're actually desiring the God of mammon. That's why people who are depressed over money and material things, 
they get possessed very easily. They call themselves Christians, but that seed that's inside, that's being fed, is an evil seed. So beloved, whether you have things and you, or you don't have things, as long as you have God, as long as you talk to Him, and you know the irony of that is, the more you resist material things, the more God blesses you with them. And that's how Jesus lived his entire three and a half years on the road. He was constantly provided for. There was no lack. And yet he removed himself. He didn't even have a building to call people and have an evangelistic crusade. His platform, his pulpit was the boat. He, it was a traveling pulpit. He, his tent was a tree. His church was a mountaintop. So it doesn't matter. God takes care when the spirit comes first. So I want you to put God first in everything. And you know, I, I, don't, I don't mean to go into this because this is, this is not who I am or the church is. But if this is a teaching, you take it or leave it, it's up to you. If you desire things so much that you feel that you don't want to give to God um, his portion and I told you last week this is the test of your desire for mammon of your evil seed if you resist making sure that the light shines on everybody that my light is spread if you resist that spiritual because that comes from goodness when you have good seed in you, you will make sure that the light shines brighter. The spiritual things come first. But there's some that are tempted to hold on because why? They can do things with that 10%. They can go and buy things, material things for themselves. They can satisfy the material, physical needs. And that's why Jesus stopped the entire service in the synagogue. When service was about to begin, and the preachers were probably in the front and the elders and, and people were walking in and giving money. Jesus was sitting by the treasury. And he wanted to point to them the evil seed. He looked at everybody giving and then his disciples said, no, come, the service starting. What are you doing, Lord? Come. And Jesus said, no, 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 you, you come here. I want to show you something. And he looked at the widow and he said, see this lady? She gave everything. Now, God is not asking you to give everything. But she had very little and whatever little she had, she gave it because her good seed was alive. Her evil seed was being crushed. It wasn't so much effective because there's a lot of rich people came and gave a lot. God is not dismissing that. But he says, let me show you something. If you want to kill that evil seed completely, see if you can make that move. Let's go to 2nd Esdras. Behold, I will go as you have commanded me and reprove the people who now live. Now remember, Ezra is talking to angel Uriel. But who will warn those who will be born afterward? For the world is set in darkness and those who dwell in it are without light. Wow. Wow. For your law has been burned, therefore no one knows the things that are done by you or the works that will be done. But if I have found favor before you, send the Holy Spirit to me and I will write all that he has done in the world since the beginning, even the things that were written in your law, that men might be able to find the path and that those who would live in the latter days may live. You see these things I'm reading to you. These are things that Ezra asked God for. Because all the materials were burnt. And they had no record of what's going to happen in the latter days and so forth. And so this is the reason why I'm sharing this with you. Because this man asked God to write it. And the Roman Catholic Freemasons hid this thing. But it's coming to light. These are the things we've been reading the last few weeks about. So Ezra is saying to God, you know, 
the people in the last days, what are they going to do? They don't know anything that's going to happen. How the light is going to be shining on them? Somebody needs to know so that they, they can spread this and, 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 and reveal all the hidden things that are going to be awaiting them. Now all these things Ezra is talking in 2nd Ezra is all about the latter times. And then he goes on to say this in 15, 2nd Ezra 15. Don't be afraid of their plots against you. Wow. Don't let the unbelief of those who speak against you trouble you. For all the unbelievers will die in their unbelief. Wow. So God is giving the latter day saints, not the church group, the people who live in the last days. He's giving them hope. So whatever they're plotting, it will be revealed by this light and God will help you through it. Don't be alarmed. We read some of this in Revelations, but we get it from Ezra first in verse 5. Behold, says the Lord, I bring evils on the whole world, sword, famine, death and destruction. For wickedness has prevailed over every land and their hurtful works have reached their limit. Therefore, says the Lord, I will hold my peace no more concerning their wickedness which they profanely commit. Neither will I tolerate them in these things which they wickedly practice. Behold, the innocent and the righteous blood cries to me and the souls of the righteous cry out continually. I will surely avenge them, says the Lord, and I will receive to me all the innocent blood from among them. Behold, my people is led like a flock to the slaughter. Wow. You know, God is predicting these things that are happening way back in the time of Ezra. Some 400 years before Jesus even came. I just want to take you to this contemporary thing that's happening in our world right now. There's an article that tells us and this is, a, this is a fact check. Fact check article. 15 Minute City is an urban planning concept that promotes easy access to essential amenities. Now I know that I've spoken about 15 Minute Cities or Smart Cities before. It's actually being, an experiment is actually being carried out as we speak in the United Kingdom. A 15-minute city is an urban planning model that envisions an environment where people can access amenities within a 15-minute walk, bike ride or public transport journey from their homes. Reuters found no evidence that the concept promotes or equates to a as many people have claimed online. Others say 15-minute cities are effectively Climate change falsely claim the concept is brainchild of the United Nations Sustainable Development Goals. So, they are once again want to cover over the truth. But in essence, there is a plan. Here's a light coming now, you need to see it. That around the world, after they remove most of the population through, uh, through nefarious means by the food poisoning or whatever sicknesses that are going to be released. Once the population is down and we're assuming that to be 2030, that's their goal. They're going to start these cities everywhere that is already being prepared around the world in every country. And they're going to put a certain number of people in that city. And you're not going to be allowed to leave that city. You're going to have to live inside that city. You can't, everything will be 15 minutes from you by walking or riding a bike, the hospitals, shops, everything. So you cannot come out of that boundary. That's going to be how people who are living are going to be living. Not to mention that that fake intelligence thing, I can't use that word. They're going to be implanting that. So we're going to get robot human Android human beings walking around, they'll own nothing and they'll be happy. Remember, remember that, they pull that down now. Now, 
You know, I mentioned to you about this movie called Silo. Um, it's about in in the last episode. Well, firstly, in 140 years, this community was living underground in a silo. Everything was there: plants, uh, food, everything. So, with 140 years, they lived in the silo, and the world outside. Was they, they were told, all the inhabitants, children, grandchildren that grew up in that silo, they, they were told that outside is poisonous air, they're not allowed to go there. We do not know why we are here. We do not know who built the silo. And why we are underground. We only know the world outside our sanctuary is death. If you boil the pact down to one rule, it's do not say you want to go outside. Or you will go outside. Listen, they have the ability to change what we see on the screens, in the cafeteria, throughout the silo, everywhere. What are you talking about? They take an image and, and they alter it somehow. When I get out there, if that's what it's really like, I won't clean. I'll wave goodbye because I would have made the biggest mistake of my life. But if I'm right and it's green and lush and beautiful, I'll pull out my wool and I'll start to clean. And you'll know. And in the last episode, somebody went out and they found that what they were seeing from the inside, because they had a glass to look on the outside and everything was dry and arid, uh, it was actually a virtual manipulation of what actually was outside. So the person that went outside and wanted to be released from the silo, they allowed them to go out. And when they were showing back, there were a whole lot of silos underground that all different communities were living in but in the distance there was a city and only the elite people is assumed to have been there the rest of the world run by mayors who are connected to the outside world they were going to run these silos so listen they are telling us what the future holds now Having mentioned these smart cities, not for nothing, I'm going to read to you 2 Ezra chapter 15. Woe to the world and those who dwell in it, for the sword and destruction draws near. Now this is the end times prophecies. A nation will rise up against nation to battle with weapons in their hands, for there will be sedition among men. That means people will be rebelling against the government. And growing strong against one another in their might. They won't respect their king or their chief or their great ones. For a man will desire to go into a city and will not be able. Now come on. Two and a half thousand years ago, Ezra knew that you and I are coming to a time when they won't allow you to leave and go into a place, into the city. You're going to be kept by force in a secluded zone that nobody will want will be able to leave and Ezra told us this listen for a man will desire to go into the city and will not be able for because of their pride the cities will be troubled the houses will be destroyed and the men will be afraid a man will have no pity on his neighbors but will assault their houses with the sword and plunder their goods because of the lack of bread and for great suffering. I, I can't, you know God is so wonderful that there is nothing that he doesn't know that's going to happen in the future. And he's telling Ezra, tell them. And so 
as he shined the light it approaches us and our light needs to start shining so that everyone can see now there is a clip that I've asked Nicole to divide and play we cannot use the whole thing because of time so I'm using a portion portions of it so that you can get a picture of and I, uh, it, it, of something called phantom DNA effect. All these studies are published in science. So science is telling us something. And when science tells you something, it cannot be argued because it is evidential. Now, as I play this, I want you to pay very careful attention to the things that are being said so that you can fully grasp and understand the concepts. Watch this clip, pay careful attention, phantom DNA effect. Experiment number one. This was performed uh, in 1992 in Russian researchers, Russian physicists, uh, and it was published in the bulletin of the Lebedev Physics Institute, 1992. It tells us that the stuff we're made of communicates with the stuff that the rest of our world is made of. DNA speaks to the field. So let me describe the experiment like this. Researchers took a, a vase, a closed vase, closed on both ends, glass tube. They took all of the air out of the tube and created what we call a vacuum, implying that there's nothing in the tube. Well, we know that there may not be any physical matter, but there's still something in the tube, and what is in there are photons, photons of light. So that's no secret. The first part of the experiment was to detect where the photons were in that tube that we knew were in there. Uh, and this is what the, the, the experiment showed us, that the photons are completely random in that tube. Next part of the experiment, scientists took human DNA and they placed it into the tube and took all the air out again, is that in the presence of the DNA, the photons were no longer random. They followed a pattern from the DNA itself. They became ordered in the presence of the DNA. This is a mind blower. We're not supposed to have, our stuff is not supposed to have any effect on that stuff. In fact, it says we are forced to accept the possibility that some new field of energy well, we know it's not new, it's always been there. We're just recognizing it. That some new field of energy is being excited by the DNA. It is called the phantom DNA effect. That is the, the name of the effect that we're seeing here. It was published in the journal Nanobiology, 1995. All right, so what do we just do? What does this experiment tell us? That human DNA influences the stuff our world is made of. All right. Experiment number two, Paper released 1993, the title of the paper sounds very complex, it's actually very simple. Local and non-local effects of coherent heart frequencies on conformational changes of DNA. What this experiment is showing is that the heart produces frequencies that change the shape of the DNA and the ability of the DNA to express fully is determined by its shape. All right, so the heart is producing effects that determine whether or not that DNA can express fully. We are creating the effects in the heart that are creating the frequencies that are having that effect. All right, so here's the experiment. Here it is right here. And what scientists wanted to know was what effect does the human heart, the frequencies of the heart have on DNA? They had pristine DNA they took from uh, umbilical tissue so it's very pristine, it's not damaged, it's not aged, it's not deteriorated. They isolated that DNA uh, in a tube, within a tube. They allowed that tube to be in proximity, close proximity to the heart, it was in the same room. Uh, and when individuals trained in heart-based emotion, they were, they were feeling in the presence of heart-brain harmony, all right, they were creating emotions of love, appreciation, gratitude, compassion, positive emotions. And look what happened in the presence of love, appreciation, gratitude, compassion, the DNA expanded. Now, 
That's important because when the DNA relaxes and expands, it is allowed a full expression of all of the genes that are in that segment of the DNA. All right. So what we're saying is this DNA can express completely and, and healthier in a more healthy way in the presence of these emotions. What happened in the presence of negative emotions like anger, hate, jealousy, rage? Well, it's just the opposite of what you would affect. Look at what happened in those negative emotions. The DNA contracted. It wound itself up so tight that it was not able to fully express. And this is why when we find ourselves in prolonged experiences, unresolved anger, hate, jealousy, rage, it affects our health because the DNA cannot express fully. So this experiment is very key unto itself because it's telling us, and here's what we saw, quote, individuals trained in feelings of deep love and appreciation. Now listen to this. We're able to intentionally change the shape of the DNA. That is a powerful, powerful statement. It means that we have the ability as masters of our own self-regulation through the choice of the feelings and the emotions that we have in our hearts. Our, our job is to self-regulate those feelings and emotions. As we master those, we can actually change the shape of the DNA in ourselves and regulate our own health, our own wellness, our own youth, our own longevity, all, all of these things, and much, much more. So this is the result. Uh, human emotion, I love this, produces effects which defy conventional laws of experiment. The first experiment showed us that DNA changes the way that matter organizes itself in our physical world. So emotion changes the DNA, the DNA changes matter. If you take out the middle step, what we're saying is emotion changes matter around us and within us. Physical manifestation of an intangible signal as well. It has been shown that our emotions have a vibratory frequency to them. Furthermore, there are only two emotions that humankind experiences, fear and love. All other emotions branch either directly or indirectly from these two emotions. Fear has a long and slow frequency vibration to it, while love has a very rapid and high frequency. To show that vibration is the very foundation of existence, Hans Jene developed what is known as cymatics in the 1940s to show that when vibrations of sound are passed through a form of media, there is a set pattern that will follow. When the frequency increases, the media develops into a more complex pattern. This is precisely what is happening to our Earth and to humanity. There are 64 possible codes of amino acids in our DNA structure made from four elements, carbon, oxygen, hydrogen, and nitrogen. By any means of logic, we should have all 64 codes activated within our DNA structure. Yet we presently only have 20 active codes. And of these 64 possibilities, it appears that only 20 of these codes are turned on right now for us, the 20 amino acids. There is a switch that turns off and turns on where those coding sites lie and that the switch uh, for that turning off and turning on is what we call emotion. And this is the first time that we've ever seen the patterns of emotion directly physically linked to human genetic material. Well, fear is a long, slow wave of emotion. So this wave of fear is a long, slow wave and touches relatively few sites on this DNA. So an individual living in fear is limited to the number of antenna that they have available to them. Whereas an individual uh, living in the pattern of love, this is love in DNA. You can see it's, it's a higher frequency, shorter uh, wavelength. We have many more potential sites for coding uh, along that genetic pattern. This information, this is amazing. This is the first time we've ever had a hard digital link between emotion and genetics. This is important to understand because another researcher named Vladimir Popinov measured tiny particles of light called photons inside a vacuum tube. The photons were scattered as expected. A sample of DNA was then entered into the vacuum tube and they measured the photons again. 
They found that the particles of light aligned themselves along the axis of the DNA. Then, as they removed the DNA sample, the photons remained aligned to the same form of the DNA even though no DNA was present. This is what is known as the phantom DNA experiment. Science has now bridged a very important gap between physical and ethereal, or spiritual. Our emotions directly affect the structure of our DNA, which directly shapes the physical world we experience every day. Wow. You have the ability to activate DNA codes that can make your codes function at capacity just by having love. Now you remember that Japanese scientist we spoke about water memory and so forth in the previous sermons. Now as I mentioned these things Nicole shows usually the videos that are, I'm referring to you can go back and get a full uh, view of these sermons so that you can be appraised of everything. Now, you can control the inside and you can control the outside just by the thought you have and the heartbeat reflects your thought. So if you have a feeling of love, your heart generates a frequency of love which expands your DNA, which allows it to make healthy cells which makes a healthy human being. Not only that, but the people you hang around with, those people, they, be, they are affected positively by that love. And they grow well. And they grow healthy. And even your things, like your vegetables that you cook, like your car that you drive, if you drive it, and you carry this this frequency is impacts on things but when you have you know you in my books you hear this when bad luck hits it like it continues it doesn't stop like you're in a hole and you're sinking and you can't come out i use the term bad luck but i'm using it because the best way to describe it so when you have a negative emotion when you start hating people when you become angry when you are depressed when you worry, it shrinks your DNA, which means less expression of your DNA, which means that you have less functioning of the DNA, which means cells are not made properly or some are not even made. It's like your codes are switched off. And this leads to things like cancer. This leads to other kind of sicknesses and abnormalities that your body will naturally make but it doesn't make because of how you feel and then the people around you will be negatively affected not only will they feel the vibe of darkness but they will their bodies that's why if you hang around a certain type of people they don't only influence you from their actions but hidden things influence you things that the eye cannot see frequencies and that's why when you are around someone who is depressed, you feel depressed because that affects you. And so, when people are evil-minded, when you'll find people who are evil-minded normally gather together, they all have an effect on each other. And what you don't realize is that they destroy themselves. And Ezra told us, don't worry about it, they'll destroy themselves. But you as a child of God cannot fit into that category. Because you too, with unbelief, will destroy yourself. So, I need you to understand that science is telling us what God is telling us. That love is the most powerful emotion that can affect, it can heal the sick. It can heal your body. Jesus says love is the most powerful of them all. It can heal your environment. You won't get things keep breaking because the more you depress, the more other things go wrong. The money is gone, it gets low, the food gets finished, the food goes off, there's not enough money to pay this because of the feeling. You don't realize that your feeling changes everything around you. So what are you contributing to your own body, 
and to the people around you. What are you feeding your body? What emotions are you feeding your body? And the people and the things and your possessions around you. Now if you feel what you think, if you feel fear that something is going to ro- go wrong, you know Murphy's law, it goes wrong. That's because you're generating, you're generating the feeling of fear. So if you doubt something is going to happen, if you have doubt, then that something will definitely not go according to plan. And this is why Jesus, this is what Jesus was doing on the boat when he told Peter, come and walk. If you have doubt, you have fear, you're looking at the storm, you're going to fall, you're going to sink. And this is the recipe for even miracles. What you think and you generate, you see. Oh, next week I'm going to give you another beautiful sermon that's going to demonstrate the power of Jesus. So let's go back to Thomas. We spoke about the gospel of Thomas and he gave us clarity. Remember this? If two make peace with each other in this one house, they will say to the mountain, move away, and it will move away. I'm going to explain this even more further next week, and it's going to be mind-blowing. So, what you think generates an emotion, and that emotion creates a heartbeat, and that heartbeat sends a message for you to accomplish what your mind thinks. As a man thinks in his heart, so is he and everything around him. Remember, uh, Solomon gave us that. For as he thinks in his heart, so is he. Ah, you know, this man was wise, right? God shared with him things that science is only discovering now in the 90s and, and forward. So when God says something, as a man thinks in his heart, so is he. he it's more than what meets the eye. So if something is going wrong around you, do you know just by positive thinking, just by showing feelings of love and peace inside of you, you can reshape the things around you. So if some of you might feel possessed, things are going wrong, just start to think godly, good seedly. Think peace. Take a deep breath. Start reading, start listening to the sermons I'm preaching. Change your mindset. Start thinking different things. And it will change. You can reshape everything around you. Wow. Just by the feeling you generate. So listen, if you're sick in your body, I want you to don't just pray with hope. I want you to have positiveness. Go out with your family. Have some fun. Do some laughing. Watch some comedies. Forget about the fear you are entertaining. Start to become positive. Laugh with the people around you despite your house getting repossessed. Despite things not working, I don't want you to only rejoice when you see something good happening. I want you to rejoice despite not seeing things happening. That's called faith. Now, with this faith in mind, start to think positively about everything. Not complaining. Complaining is opposite of what God is asking. The more you complain, the more things go wrong. I don't know if you experienced that. The more you get depressed, the worse things get. So I want you to turn that around with immediate effect. From now, wake up and start changing the atmosphere inside your body and outside. Let your mind start to think good things so that you can generate healing inside your own body. Healing in your home. Everything that is going wrong you and your family can turn it around right this minute. Including young children, teenagers that are in the house. For some reason, you seem to hate the people you're living with. Forget them for your sake. Turn your mind around. Start to smile. Start to laugh. Start to contribute. Start to go around with your family. Make things happen for your sake. Otherwise, you're going to destroy your own self. Do you know this is the thing that God gave us to be a master of ourselves and to be a master of the world around us. He gave us this unique power only only to a human being. Nobody else has it. Now, here is the most interesting thing. This awesome power that God gave the human can only be done by a human. 
uh, it cannot be done by an artificial being, that machine. It can't be done by them. Because they cannot generate a heartbeat like a human can. So what the devil wants to do, he wants to take that power away from the human being. And that's why he wants to introduce. First he wants to change the structure of the DNA of a human being. So that a human being is no longer the human that God made. Which means that his power is now gone. He cannot generate that beat, that frequency of love, of peace. He cannot. Once the soul is missing, he cannot. And then he wants to replace that with other beings that can control things using frequency of Wi-Fi and Bluetooth and all these things. So this is the plan. Now while you got that power, do not give it up for anything. Do not alter who God made you. Do not give it up. And I want you to get closer to God spiritually. Let his, the things that concern his world be more important than the things in this world. Get that in you and God will start to regenerate the dying things in your life. And I want you to start that immediately. As your shepherd, I want to pray with you and ask God's covering and blessing upon you. Let us pray. If you don't mind, raise your hands, close your eyes. Let us pray. Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, I ask first your protection of the children in the home. That Lord, you will renew their mind. That Father, you will give them a new outlook in life. I cancel every work of the enemy and Satan against these young people. Whatever comes from the television screens, Lord, even if they in our face, your children will be protected because they will have wisdom. They will reject every unclean thing in Jesus' name. And Lord, your spirit will be in them all the time, embracing them, loving them, keeping them. I pray for the adults in that home, for the sake of the children, that they be protected. I pray that your light, that everyone listening to me, after they hear me, they're going to take time, Lord, to shine the light that they have now on the world around them. Let Use this opportunity, Father, in the name of Jesus, so that everyone that is under the sound of my voice can be in that fold that you will take up to heaven one day. Bless them all, Father, in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you for listening. Thank you for joining me, family of God. May God bless you. I'll see you next week. God bless. So when you have a negative emotion, when you start hating people, when you become angry, when you are depressed, when you worry, it shrinks your DNA. And this leads to things like cancer. This leads to other kind of sicknesses and abnormalities that your body will naturally make. When bad luck hits it, like it continues, it doesn't stop, like you're in a hole and you're sinking and you can't come out.